my name is Ali Ansari. I have just started here as a professor, uh, a teaching assistant professor at the University of Illinois in the bioengineering department. Um, I previously was teaching at Bucknell um, and Bucknell University is in Pennsylvania and it's a relatively small university, but um, I was teaching there as a, uh, a visiting professor, which is kind of like a mercenary. So uh, I taught in the electrical engineering department. I taught in the bioengineering department. I taught statistics. I taught probability. I taught all sorts of different random classes. So I'm glad that now that I'm at the University of Illinois, I can actually focus on classes that are that are really more uh, germane to my interests and, and what I want to do. Um. In uh, Illinois, I taught, or sorry, in, in Bucknell, I taught everything from signals and systems to uh, computer science to uh, a bunch of different uh, probability courses. But here at Illinois, I'll be teaching a couple courses on uh, well, signals and systems again. Uh, because I've taught that before. But I'm teaching a lot of introduction classes, which are a lot of fun. I love introduction classes because students, this is the first time they get to see a material. So I basically get to help them, I guess, lower the barrier of entry. I don't want the classes to be scary. So I'm one of the things that I'm trying to do is try to make a lot more games and active learning stuff for those intro classes so that students aren't scared of their upper level like nanotech class, right? So um that's kind of what I'm doing. That's why I'm excited because I get to I get to play with those. A lot of the classes that I've been teaching are upper level classes, so elective classes at Bucknell. So basically, I taught a senior level sort of uh, a circus class, a senior level uh, signals class. I taught a senior level like uh, biochemistry class, or I guess biomaterials is more accurate. Um, so a lot of the courses that I taught were at like the very end level, right? And then I also taught a couple at the junior level. I've only actually taught, uh, I think, two classes with sophomores. Um, in terms of the way I connect with students, at Bucknell, a lot of the classes are smaller. So like the largest class I taught was like 30 students. Um, and I think that I try to relate to the students because I think... I don't take myself very seriously. I think that's the biggest thing. I think you could probably tell from me talking that I don't really like, uh, I kind of make jokes at my own expense and stuff. So I think that I try to make an environment where they feel comfortable either making jokes or they make they feel comfortable making mistakes um, because I feel like you're gonna do that throughout your life. And I think that if you do it in a low stakes environment, then you feel more safe when you do it in a high stakes environment, right? So. I think that's mostly how I sort of communicate at least my courses and my classes. So I'll be like like lecturing or, or I'll be talking. And then if I like realize that like people aren't listening or something, I'll just like make a joke or I'll wait or something. Um, I've also had classes that I've com just completely canceled because like I'd, be, I'd go to the class and everybody was like super stressed and you could sense that you walk into the room and everybody's like super high key. You're like, okay, wait, <laughs> let's take a second to breathe about this and figure out exactly what's going on. Um, so I think that's really more of, of the, what I want in the course. I, like I said, I, this is like one of the very first years that I've, well, this is the first year I'm teaching at Illinois. So I have much larger class sizes. So I don't actually know how that'll translate. Um, especially if there's like 60 students, right. Then I'm out, I'm outmanned like 50 to one, right. Like that's a lot. Um, but like, I think that's sort of the vibe that I want to go for is that I want them to feel comfortable because a lot of times they're going to have classes that aren't comfortable, right? They're going to have classes that are really stressful. It matters for their GPA and stuff. But this is a hundred level course, right? Like I'm not, what am I going to do? I'm not going to force them to do calculus or something, right? So they can mess around. That's fine. Um, I think that's sort of the way I connect. Um, I usually have office hours and stuff. And whenever they come to office hours, we like chat. Um, I remember uh, one of my students came by to my office hours just to chat about TV shows that he'd watched. And that was uh, so much fun. Um, so I, I have a, a range of students that come by, so, so that's good. For the most part, the way I sort of do this is I, at the very beginning of the class, I give them sort of really two things. One, I give them a syllabus, which is like basically like saying, okay, this is what I'm thinking 
I want to cover. This is what I, my expectations are to begin with. I then give them a, a like a day one survey, which basically asks them, okay, well, how comfortable are you in this material? Like, what material uh, do you think is going to be a problem? Like, what is it that you know you want to learn? What is it that you're excited to learn? Whether that's inside the syllabus or outside of the syllabus. Um, and I usually use that to sort of taper or, or tune, I guess, is more accurate, the class. So for instance, for the MATLAB course, when I asked people, how confident are you in MATLAB? I got like basically everybody put like zero or one. And I was like, well, I guess we're going to spend more time on the basics then. And so I had to basically rearrange sort of the structure of the course. But I think that's important because if I don't know where they're at and I'm trying to get them to a destination, like we're already, <laughs> we have different sorts of uh, ideas of what the pacing is going to be. So that's that's one of the things that I do. Um, I also, for the, like the upper level students, what I also did was I had a mid-semester survey as well to sort of just like check in and be like, hey guys, how are you doing? I think we're doing great. Do you guys think we're doing great? Like, what can I do better? Are there things that like uh, like bother you about the way I teach? For instance, uh, one of the things that one of my students told me, which was great advice, um, it's anonymous, so I don't know who wrote it, um, but they wrote that um, they appreciated all the different handouts that I gave, but they wish that I put less information on the handouts because they said I did such a thorough job of putting everything on the handouts that they weren't actually engaged in the classroom because they would just like listen to me talk and then zone out and then come back. And they were like, I don't need to do anything because there's no stakes. Everything's on the handout. And I sat there for a while and I was like, man, they're better teachers than I am. Like, <laughs> what a great idea of increasing engagement by just leaving gaping holes in your own notes. Um, so I, I've started trying to implement that as well. Um, but it, it's really interesting because like a lot of these students do know what makes them learn a little better. And of course, there's some students who are like, I want like no homework. I think I'll learn so much better if there's like zero grades. And they're like, okay, well, sure, Johnny, I don't know who you are, but I bet it's you. Uh, but like, it, it's, it's, I make jokes, but I, I do think that some students actually did ask for more homework. Some students asked for more um, amounts of practice. And so what I started doing in the probability course is I would I basically give them like, five minutes in the middle of the class to do a little activity. So they would have practice doing this stuff because a lot of the students said, hey, I understand it when you're talking. I don't understand it when I'm doing it. So could I have more practice doing it? And I was like, yes, <laughs> I can fix that. So that's that's sort of one of the ways that I try to make it so that I can temper expectations because if if they have adequate practice, um, I don't think the material's ever crazy enough that they shouldn't at least succeed in learning it um, and for the levels that I've taught so far, right? Like it was like basic elementary probability. So it was like, uh, like A is into B and stuff. And so. A lot of what I do in terms of scholarly activity is trying to implement and uh, basically uh, create different kinds of games for students to sort of play with and learn with. Um, basically, it's kind of like gamification, but it's a little bit less intense. Uh, gamification involves an entire, usually an entire process or rebuilding of restructuring the course. Um, it's a little bit more akin to sort of game-based learning. Um, I've done it before in a lot of my labs for the, the MATLAB course that I taught, as well as some of the signals and systems courses I taught. Um, and mostly because I really disliked how um, some of the classes that we teach for, for uh, rote materials, so stuff that is very repetitive. Um, I didn't like how the guidance on basically teaching MATLAB courses was you give them code, they regurgitate the code, they do the thing, and they learn the thing. Um, so instead, I built a system of a lot of different games. Um, so I built like crosswords, I built like different Sudoku puzzles, I built a murder mystery. And the idea was that they would basically do the same sort of coding stuff. So they would basically have to learn, how do I make a loop or how do I do these things? But I would use it in a way that I would give them sort of a crime or something and they had to basically solve it. And the way they solved it was using the code that they knew to sort of figure out what was happening. Um, and for the crosswords and stuff, I did a little bit backwards where I had, I had a blank, right? So crosswords, they have like the empty boxes. And the clue for it would be something that was from the lecture. So they'd actually have to go back and sort of synthesize, well, what is the answer to this question? It might be for loop. 
And if it was, then there would be basically a question they'd have to answer. And then that would give them the clue that would go into the blank. So I tried to make it so that it was as rigorous as possible while still making it so that it wasn't a drag. Um, the reason why I say it, it's, it's an ongoing project for me is that I realized that the games I made uh, weren't as inclusive as I intended to because a lot of them were based on words and word games and stuff like that because I really love those and that was my own blind spot. Um, I had some non-native speakers in my classes which then told me that instead of being uh, engaging the, the crossword puzzle and the word finds were tedious. Uh, they weren't like impossible they were just more effort than they were fun and that is not the direction I wanted to go in. So it's it's been uh, like, that's why I started creating Sudoku puzzles and stuff like that, because I want to be inclusive with these games. I want them to be something that people will enjoy, but I don't want them to be at the expense of any sort of stress or, or, or rigor, you know? So that's sort of the idea of one of the things that I'm trying to implement. I haven't really gotten to the level where I can do it at every single class, but I am kind of working towards that and integrating that kind of active learning techniques of, of making the students sort of have to work through something rather than being taught uh, or like in the sense of being talked at. Um, the one thing that I wanted to say is that I like, I really appreciate how welcoming and open everybody is. Like for instance, Yanfen, which we both know, it has always been such a source of light and inspiration. And also whenever I have like a question or something, it's she's always a willing ear to sort of bounce off like, hey, is this a good idea? Or should I implement this? And and it's it's really helpful and, and motivating as a new professor, I think, at least for me, to sort of have that sort of support network. And so I really appreciate the fact that I do have all these people in my email that I can just be like, hey, I'm trying to do this. Do you think this is a bad idea? And then they'd be like, yes, that's a terrible idea. And I'm like, thanks for your honesty. Um, so yeah, it, it, I had the same sort of network when I was at Bucknell with the, the professor next door to me. Um, so I, I really do appreciate having it was just a sanity check ear, uh, <laughs> which a lot of times I need because I end up with these long machinations and complicated games. And they're like, oh, like, you have five minutes for this game. And I'm like, ah, ah, fair. <laughs> so.